Don't worry. <laughs> we just do it. Yeah. <laughs> do your okay. thing. Yeah. Hey guys and welcome. This is our first interview. We are here in Gubra in uh, uh, Triumph uh, Canarias. I'm here with Hanna Johansson from Sweden, and uh, she was here for first time. And uh, how was it? It was amazing. I really loved it, and I'm so surprised by how many places you can fit in one island. I mean, Gran Canaria is not very big, but still you can experience almost everything from nice beaches with palm trees, aloe vera plants and cacti, to these really big, nice, peaceful pine tree forests. So I've had a real blast this week. Uh, it's good to mention that uh, you, uh, you spent a week on uh Dream Street Twin. Yes. The new model. So tell us about the bike as well. Uh, how was it? Because the we have to tell we have to tell people that you are uh, ambassador of yeah. uh, Triumph uh, Sweden, right? Or Scandinavia. Yeah, in Scandinavia. So I am the brand ambassador for Triumph motorcycles in Scandinavia. So I ride Triumph, of course. And this was actually my first time on a Street Twin, and it was perfect for the roads here yeah. because the roads are not very big. It's a 900 cc engine. And it has really nice torque. I was surprised by that. And also the sound of the bike. I was really yeah, surprised. Yeah, yeah. I know you liked it as well. Yeah, you could <laughs> yeah, hear the bike. Great. Yeah, it was really great. So it was perfect to ride on those roads because the roads are quite narrow. And you go like up and down, up and down. You have to change the gears oh, yeah. a lot. And uh, it was really nice to handle. It was easy to handle. And it felt like I became one with the bike. Yeah, it yeah. was perfect. Yeah. Tell us, uh, what, what, did you thought about, what did you think about uh, Gran Canaria or in Canary Islands in general before you came here, you know? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, yeah, yeah. Um, of course, I was a little bit judgmental maybe about Gran Canaria from, from the beginning. I was thinking that this island was mainly for people going on yeah. vacation yeah. with like all-inclusive trips to big hotels, laying on the beach and eating and then going home again. But there's so much more. So, okay. yeah. Can you can you remember uh, like like the top three moments of uh, this trip? You know, you spent like seven, uh, eight days uh, riding, so yeah. I guess you got uh, quite a lot of kilometers. But what was like the, the highlights of the trip? Wow, that's a good question. First of all, I think it was actually since I am from Sweden, where it is very yeah, yeah. cold and dark at the moment, it was this first feeling of sitting outside, having lunch in <laughs> my T-shirt, you know, and enjoy the sun. I think that was the first real big aha moment, you know, like, wow, I can do this in December and I yeah, don't have to fly to the other side of the world. Uh, secondly, it's the people here. The people are amazing, really kind and helpful and they're asking about the bike and even though, I mean, I, I don't speak much Spanish, I don't speak any Spanish, <laughs> uh, the people still wanted to talk with me and it was this old lady coming up to me outside of a cathedral and she didn't speak any English, I didn't speak any Spanish, but she just wanted to kiss my cheeks and just... Yeah, wish me luck, I think. <laughs> she was really sweet. Third, the roads, of course, the roads. Um, and the small villages, mm -hmm. I have to say, because everything that is behind the big hotels, it's just so overwhelming. Yeah. You can go from these small villages just on the coast and inland as well. It was a blast riding here, I have to say. So the roads and the villages. Yeah. yeah um Again, it's important to mention that you uh, you travel a lot on motorcycle. Yeah. Like, well, tell, tell us about your trips this uh, this year well, and what what is the plan for the future? <laughs> wow, this year, <laughs> there's so many trips I have to go back in my head. I started with South Africa actually yeah. in mm -hmm. January, and I just came back from Australia when I went to yeah. South Africa, and I've been to Japan yeah. and South Korea. And I also took a trip from Portugal, so I shipped a bike to Lisbon, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then I rode the whole way back home to Stockholm, so that was quite a trip as well. So yeah, and for the future, actually I'm going to India in oh, February. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. Right until right? Or triumph? Oh, actually. Triumph. Still triumph. Yeah, of uh, course. Of course. <laughs> um, so, do you travel a lot, you know, uh, around, the, around the globe, you know? Can, how, where you would fit like this riding in, uh, in uh, Canary Islands, you know, but was it something, uh, you know, like... Uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was really special, and I think uh, a lot of people are asking me, of course, about what yeah. I would recommend to go on a, for a motorcycle trip, and I always ask back, like, what, what kind of person you are, because yeah, yeah. it depends. If you want adventure, do you want to relax, or do you just want to take a ride for a few days? Do you want to ride 
far, do you want to ride yeah. fast? Uh, so there are a lot of questions, actually. Like when you buy a bike. Yeah, you know, yeah. Some people ride you know, laid back bikes and somebody wants you know, a dirt bike. Um, and I would say that Gran Canary is for people who want to go away when it's really cold at home, yeah. they want to have a really nice vacation with nice curves, good food, nice people. And yeah, an adventure where you can actually explore things um, because I, I really like this going behind the hotels, that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to show people and yourself that it's more than other people might say. What, can you compare like the type of the roads? Because uh, you know, I, I'm here for uh, quite a time, so I know how it is, but can you compare it like uh, how, what is the type of the road? If it's like flowing or is it really technical or it have to be like... Oh, it depends. There are really some advanced roads here, I have to say, that are very narrow yep. and can be very steep. Uh, so on those roads, you, you need to know how to handle the bike. Yeah. Uh, but you don't have to go on these roads, especially my, my favorite road, one of my new yeah. really big favorites. I don't know the name of the road, but you know which one it is the, along the coast. Yeah, GC200, you know, from uh, Agate to Lalda, mm -hmm. then <laughs> to Mogan. Very emblematic uh, for uh, Gran Canaria. I love that road. And I felt like I could really find the flow yeah. on, on that road without thinking too much about how to shift gears and, and so on. Did you find yourself uh, during the trip, uh, the traffic here, you know? Uh, if, you, if you go to the mountains, I suppose that there yeah. was n no one? No, <laughs> sometimes I can find myself completely alone. And I didn't see any vehicles within like 20 uh -huh. minutes, I think. It went like 20 minutes and I thought, where am I? Yeah. Because I was completely alone and I stopped the bike and just enjoyed the silence for a while. Did you uh, get some, um, like from the other like, drivers from the cars or from the other bikers, did you get like a uh, good, good experience or was it like somebody? Uh, on some roads there are a lot of uh, bicyclists, yeah, uh, yeah. but I mean, as long as you know how to, how to handle, I mean, we are, a lot of different people wanting yeah. to go to the same place and we had to share the road, that's how it is. And yeah, we're yeah. all here for one reason and that's to enjoy. So that makes me happy. And I actually uh, stopped because I wanted to take a few photos and there was a bicyclist from Germany who stopped next to me and we okay. started chatting mm -hmm. and uh, he loved it here. And he said that he didn't have any problems with motorcyclists and cars and so on. And I said back that I don't have any problems with it either. But I think that's about you and how you are as a driver, I yeah. have to say. Food, you know, that's important uh, <laughs> in Spain, the Spanish food, what, yeah. what do you think, oh, uh, especially the Canarian cuisine, you know, did you mm, get something yeah. favorite or? Uh, oh, but of course I love the potatoes here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the wrinkled Pot potatoes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really good. And the sauces, those are different sauces. Yeah, it's yeah. the red one and the green one. Yeah, mojo verde and mojo rojo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eat that. <laughs> Um, and also I had octopus and yeah, those yeah. small fish, uh, Sardin, sardines, Sardin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. So I love it. I mean, Spanish food, it's really nice. Tapas, yeah. it's really perfect. But the, then you don't have to choose one dish. You can choose a lot of different dishes. Yeah, and that's perfect for me because I can never decide what to eat. So yeah, very classic to, to share the plates, you know, here. Yeah. And the chickpeas, um, the chickpea stew, that was really oh, good yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do, do you find uh, Canary Islands uh, expensive, or is it is it cheap here, or would you like you travel a lot? Or are you from Sweden, so I yeah, I was, just <laughs> I was just going to say I'm from Sweden, so it feels like anywhere I go, it's a little bit cheaper <laughs> than, yeah, yeah. than Sweden. Um, so yeah, it's a bit cheaper than Sweden. It's not super expensive, and you can also find, of course, you can find like really luxurious things and yeah, expensive yeah. fine dining and so on here, and also you can find like cheaper tapas and cheaper like Airbnbs and so on. So it's up to you actually, but you have the range, which I really appreciated. Yeah. Um, you, you travel alone, you, that's your blog, yeah. you know, we, we will mention it uh, somewhere in the video as well. <laughs> um, about accommodation, you, did you choose a hotel or did you choose like a Airbnb? So tell us uh, what's it like, what's your flow of how, how do you, you know, find yourself? Um, usually, uh, when I go on trips, yeah. I I don't book beforehand. Yeah. Uh, I try to be as spontaneous as possible because I don't want to have like somewhere I have to be at a certain time or so on. Uh, but here I knew that the island is not very big, so I can always yeah. go on the west during the day, but I can still 
stay in the main core of the island. Yeah. And so that would work. And my dream before I before I left that was to find like a cute cottage on yeah on the countryside somewhere where I could stay. And I found one, and I spent two nights there now, and it was so cozy. Yeah. It's the perfect yeah. <laughs> So I got that you know, with view and everything, and you can hear the roosters in the morning. And yeah. It was really, really cool. Cool, cool. Mm. Uh, regarding uh, motorcycles, you know, we are here in Gubra in, uh, in Las Palmas, in Gran Canaria. Um, we, uh, you tried two bikes here, right? Speed wheel yeah. and straight wheel. Yeah. Mostly on the street, street wheel. Uh, but did you tested a lot of uh, triumphs. Uh, yeah. What's, it, what's your favorite uh, triumph or what? Like, mm. Tell us the story about the... How did you get to into the motorcycles? And maybe you can tell us the story about the Triumph as well. Oh, of course. Uh, actually, I started riding because of my mother. So my mother taught me how to ride when I was 17, mm -hmm. back home on the street outside of our villa in Mura, Mura? in Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you have to be 24 in, in mm -hmm. Sweden to take a license for the bigger engines. So I waited until I was 25, got my license. And then I bought myself a Triumph Bonneville because that's what I, I have ridden in the United States before. Mm -hmm. And I took my Triumph through Eastern Europe uh, on a solo trip, two and a half months. I went through 20 countries, like wow. 9,400 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And when I came back home, of course, I loved my Triumph and I always loved Triumph. My mother is also riding Triumph. And then uh, Triumph Scandinavia asked me to come and speak on a girls event that okay. they had about how it is to travel as a solo female and what to think of and so on. And after that, it just clicked. And they asked me if I wanted to do my next trip on a street scrambler. Okay, well. And I said, but I don't have a street scrambler. <laughs> they said, but Hannah, you can have a street scrambler from us. Okay, and that's okay. how it all started. So it's, it's a perfect, perfect match between me and the guys in uh, Triumph Scandinavia. So I took a street scrambler to North Cape the oh, most okay. modern point yeah, of yeah. Europe. Yeah. And just to answer your question that you had before about my favorite bikes, because that's actually one of my favorites, the Street, street Scrambler, okay. yes. Um, it, it looks cool, which I yeah, like. Yeah. I mean, I, I love modern classics, because I, I want to feel like I am inspired by the bike, and okay. I'm not really inspired by this um, adventure look. And I want to show people that it's possible, actually, to um, make long trips on modern classics as well. So Bonneville, perfect for touring, I would say so. Yeah. And a street scrambler, looks cool, super nice to ride, and you sit really comfortable, uh -huh, uh -huh. and you can have like a hand warmers and so on. But the most, I mean, the funniest bike to ride, <laughs> that's the Speed Twin. Speed yeah, yeah, I love the Speed Twin. I agree, the I, torque I, is amazing, yeah. and I always, I, I laugh in my helmet, honestly, <laughs> when, when I'm riding that bike. But I think if, if I could dream a little bit about my future garage, it would be a speed twin and a street scrambler, depending on what mood I am in. Cool, that sounds like a, like a dream garage, you know? Right? <laughs> the speed twin and then like a... 20 more bikes. It can, it can look like this. Yeah, we, we got here a quite nice bike. Yeah. New scrambler 1200. Mm. And, uh, Traxton, really Traxton nice bike. Yeah, camera. Yeah. It looks cool, you know? Um, back to Gran Canaria. There we, you stayed in one island, right? But do, yeah. would you think you would come back um, next time to try different islands as well? Because we got... Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> I've heard there's much to explore here. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to come back for sure for, for this island because I love it. But also for maybe Lanzarote, is that the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's... Uh, Tenerife? 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 Yeah. Puerto Ventura as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally coming back, cool. that's for sure. Okay, Hannah. So, uh, the last question, you know, what you came here without knowing uh, anything, well, mm. maybe like uh, some classic things about the Canary yeah. Islands as a, as a touristic, you know, trip. But what, uh, you're coming back tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'm going back to Sweden tomorrow. What do you think you will be thinking in, on the plane, you know, like what's the, what's the feel or what's the, mem like the memories of, the, of this trip, you know? Actually, I'm quite sure that I'm going to sit on the plane tomorrow and feel like I have a relationship to this island which I didn't have before. Uh, before, it was just a story that somebody told me about a place where you want to go on an all-inclusive trip. And now it's so much more. It, I have feelings towards this island. So I'm, I'm sure that's what I'm going to think about. That's great. You know, we will uh, welcome you here. You know, we'll be here. Thank you.
Perfect. Thank you very much for thank coming. You. You know. uh, thank you. Thank you, Triumph uh, Gubera Canarias, uh, for uh, having uh, Triumphs. And I hope we'll, in next year, 2020, we will have some new bikes coming uh, to our fleet from Triumph. So That's awesome. Here, you know, of course I'm going to come back then. <laughs> and uh, you should come back, you know. So I will see you, I will see you soon, guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you guys for watching.